Hi there, it's Liz from the Contentful editorial team. If you're starting to work with Contentful, your first project might be something like working on the content of a landing page or writing a knowledge base article. And for that, you'll need to know how to find what you need in our web app, edit and publish texts, and upload and manage assets like images and video. So in this video, I'll take you through the basics of editing in our web app with the help of our demo project, Colorful. This is Colorful, our self-imagined lifestyle brand, so you don't have to stare at lorem ipsum text in every single tutorial. Everything on this site was built in Contentful, and as an editor, I can change every single piece of content in the Contentful web app. I love having that kind of power. Let's say I want to add a piece of long-form content. Maybe I have a new stylist to add to our list of tastemakers here. To do that, first I need to find out where to add the content. This is what it looks like when you log into the Contentful web app. I'm already part of the organization Colorful Collective. An organization typically represents an entire company or brand. Within an organization, you have a bunch of spaces. A space is just a way to organize content by who has access and can make changes to that content. This is my personal demo space here, but usually you'd see spaces divided by department or by project like a campaign or a microsite. I'll head to my space now and show you around. Inside a space, you can check out the content model if you're curious, but as an editor, you're mostly going to be working on the content itself. That's in this tab. This is a list of every single entry or piece of content that exists in my space. The cool thing is there are a ton of ways to look for the content you want to edit. If I know what content type I'm working on, I can filter by content type here. A content type is just a way to categorize content that's similar in structure. This is something that the developers in your team set up when they create the content model. Or if I've just been working on a piece of content, I can search by entries I've recently changed. If I'm not sure how to find the right entry, I can enter any search term and it'll show me everywhere that term is mentioned. I remember seeing Kyle Bean on that Tastemakers page, so I'm going to search for him and see what content type I need. Kyle Bean. It looks like I've got a page, an article, and a component. I'm not sure whether I want the page or the article, so I'll just have a look. Here's the Kyle Bean article live as it's displayed in my browser. It looks like a pretty straightforward structure. It's got a title, intro, body text with images, and at the bottom, some tags and recommended articles. I'm going to check out the page content type first and see what we've got. I can see the slug, which is that end bit of a URL that identifies a unique page, and those related articles we saw before. The page looks like it's linking to another entry that's nested inside here. What you're seeing in this view is a page assembly. It's a content type that's made up of other content types. The reason it's set up like this is to make it easy to reuse different pieces of content. Here, the main article content is wrapped in some formatting, which I don't see because I'm not a developer, and that extra section at the bottom. But maybe in the future, I'll want to use that main article somewhere else too. When it's nested like this, I can change the article text and Contentful updates that content in every single place it shows up. And a developer could simultaneously change the presentation and layout while I'm working on the content and we don't have to wait or bug each other at all. I want to see if this page content piece here contains the main article content I'm thinking of. I can click on it to view the nested entry. And there's my title, teaser, publish date, picture, intro, body text. Yeah, this looks like a proper article. Now that I've gotten the lay of the land, I'm going to add a whole new article about our top new stylist out of Berlin, Maria V. When I click on Add Entry, it shows me which content types I can create new entries for. I know I need a new page because that's where the article content was nested in. Now that I've got my page, I can just go through and fill in the fields. I can edit the slug here and do some SEO tweaks, like if I want Maria to be searchable under the keyword Berlin stylist. And here in the page content, I can add that nested article entry right within this page. This is where I'm going to input all the usual article content for Maria's profile. 
The short description is my meta description, so I can do some more SEO optimizations here if I want. I'll copy my text snippet from Google Docs and make sure it has all the search terms I want to include. Adding a publish date. This is just the date that appears alongside the text. I'm not scheduling the post to publish just yet. That's coming in a minute. I definitely want to add a feature image for Maria's profile. I can choose to create a new asset, which would upload a totally new image, or link an existing one. I don't remember if I've uploaded a photo of Maria yet or not, and I could pop over to the Media tab to search for it, but I know a nice shortcut too. I can press Q to do a quick search of all the content in this space. Looks like there's a media file. Nice. Since I found out there's already a profile pic for Maria in our assets, I can just link that existing one. This is what I love about Contentful. As an editor, it's usually a huge pain to wrangle the sheer amount of content, and just something small like re-uploading the same image can create redundancies that snowball into bigger and bigger errors and out-of-date material. So being able to search easily and slim down on the amount of content floating around is a total lifesaver. Luckily, our Maria is not a diva, but imagine she's a celebrity representing a major brand, and there was an outdated photo of her hiding somewhere on our site. Yikes. This little number next to my asset title represents the number of places where this image is already being used. I want to make sure the image has an accurate and descriptive alt text for SEO and accessibility. I can do that by changing the image title, which doubles as the alt text. Now that I've tweaked the title of the image, it changes the status in the menu bar to show that there are unpublished updates. Contentful saves changes automatically, so nothing will be lost if I navigate away. But the new alt title won't be live unless I click Publish. Next, I'll edit the body of the article. I usually just copy and paste my texts from a separate document, but you can add or change texts here in the editor as well. Again, no need to save, it'll autosave as you go. What you see here is a rich text editor. What that means is I can enrich the text with certain basic styling elements like bold and italics, or add a link or block quote, and also add assets in the middle of my body text. It's kind of like the happy medium between having hard-coded plain text in HTML and a what you see is what you get editor that lets you mess with the exact presentation and layout of the text on the page. This is because Contentful is built for teams. So we leave the exact presentation up to the UX designers. This helps preserve the brand and keeps overly enthusiastic people like myself from getting carried away and creating inconsistencies that I'll have to go back and change later. As I mentioned, I can add assets directly in the body text, so I'll embed an image right here. Even when I add an image in the body text, Contentful creates it as a new asset that I can reference and reuse anywhere in this space. I can upload assets from a bunch of different places like Dropbox or Google Drive, but I'll just grab the image off my hard drive this time. Once it's uploaded, I can make some final tweaks to the image if I need, like if I want to crop it to a specific aspect ratio. I'll add my alt text in the title again, and a short description for any teammates that happen to be hunting around for images in the future. Making sure to publish. So I think I've got just about everything filled in. I won't add an author because this is a profile and not a blog post but I will add some tags just for fun. When I press publish on this article, it won't show up on the live site unless the page it's nested in is live. Back on our page, there's one more thing I want to add just to give you a hint of what else is possible with Contentful. Because the article itself is just one content type in this page assembly, I can add other components around Maria's profile. In the extra section at the bottom, I could do something cool like add a few products that Maria recommends. 
I've prepared a Berlin Street style module that I'll search for and just pop in right here. You'll see. I'm ready to see what this page looks like, but I don't want to publish it yet, so I'm going to click Preview to give it a final look. The developers on your team can set up previewing in a bunch of different ways. Ours is basically just a duplicate of the live site, so everything looks exactly how it's going to look live. Everything seems to be in order. I can give the copy one last check. And look, there's our product module. If I don't like something, I can just go back into the Contentful tab of my browser, change it, and preview again. When I'm happy with the result, I can either publish it now or schedule it to publish at a specific time. You can also set something to unpublish, like if it's a limited time offer, or even create a chain of publishing events so you could set the old content to be replaced by something new at a set time. I'll just publish Maria's page now so we can see it live. Check it out! Maria already shows up in our list of tastemakers. That's a little piece of magic thanks to our front-end developers. And here's our article, polished and published. I'm pretty happy with the result, but if anything still needs to be fixed, I can make those changes exactly the same way I did before. Once you've got the basics down, you can create or change any piece of content on a website, app, or any other digital channel. But this is just the beginning. Contentful gives creators so much power to build digital experiences and collaborate in teams. So stay tuned for more videos where I'll show you how. See you soon!